I don't know why I had this like crazy thought in my mind that with entering an entirely new decade, we would be able to leave the old anti-black ways behind, especially in the black community. But old habits die hard, is that, is that, is that what we're getting at? Okay, what's going on you guys? And welcome back to the corner. Happy New Year. Oh my goodness, it is an entirely new decade. Like legit, it is 2020. We are well into 2020 now. I hope any and everyone that comes across this video that sees this, I pray and hope you had a blessed and happy new year. I hope it was safe. I hope your holidays were more than what you thought they were and more than what you wished it could be. And that if you are a student that your end of semester grades, look blessed okay since we've got most of the preliminaries out of the way don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like and of course feel like you never want to miss when the kid herself posts or when the kids are gathered on the corner put on your notification bell giving you the warning now so don't say i never gave you that at this point like 2020 our vision should be clear of the bold in the black community our vision we shouldn't need trifocals bifocals contacts none of that we should have been had 2020 because we've been calling out the same for over a couple centuries now so if you're asking yourself Quay, what are you possibly talking about what are you going off about within the first two weeks of the new year i'll tell you i'll tell you i was on instagram what was it? A couple days ago, after New Year's. And I saw that there was some anti-black comments being made by black men towards black women. And in particular, the thing that really like started to grind my gears. Y'all know sis, love a good article. I found this article on NBCNews.com. And the title of it says, Journalist Apologizes for mocking the parents of Blue Ivy, Beyonce's seven-year-old daughter. Yet again, someone else was cracking on Blue Ivy. And to be completely honest, like I was talking to my friend on the phone, right, about this whole situation. When Beyonce was pregnant with Blue Ivy, seven plus years ago, right? Everybody was supportive of it. Everybody wanted to be up on it. We expected Beyonce to have this baby, that this perfect black little baby that was gonna look just like Beyonce. She wasn't gonna look nothing like her Negroid father. You feel what I'm saying? She wasn't gonna have none of her Negroid father features. She's gonna look like her mother. She's gonna have her mother's preferable French Creole features. You see what I'm saying? She. That's what, that's what we thought. When we thought this baby was gonna be born, we thought for some reason this baby was gonna come out with anti not afrocentric features from two black ass parents i that was number one that's not even just the outside community that's the black community there was a lot of us that was hoping and praying that beyonce uh blue ivy would not look like her father let's just be clear on that because a lot of us in the black community have a really warped view of what beauty looks like and because so many of us we have been so indoctrinated into believing that what is european is the set standard of beauty and that any and everyone whether they be male nor female has to succumb to that i'm gonna try and get too deep deep about it but at the end of the day jay-z is like the epitome of the black man that a white america hates to see allegedly sold whatever the case may be, built an empire for himself, took himself out of poverty. If you were to take what we, what we, or as a collective, see as attractive, there's more people that say Jay-Z is ugly than they say that he is attractive, but they say his money makes him attractive. Different conversation. However, what they say he is unattractive with is probably the most black ass, African ass feature on him, which is his nose and his lips people love to crack on him so when blue ivy was born a lot of us hoped and prayed that she would not inherit her father's nose because some of us probably hoped and prayed that we would not remember that this little girl is a product of a black man and a black woman coming together because a lot of people forget beyonce's black i think that's what happens i think a lot of people in certain spaces accept beyonce as being white because she's like the black woman that every white person wants to be cool with then what happens sis turned like two three maybe 
and her facial features started to really come out and started to change. And at this point, not only were her facial features starting to come out, but her natural hair texture, her kinky ass, coarse ass, beautiful ass hair texture started to appear itself. And what really threw me, generations upon generations upon generations of black women that have been told you have to straighten your hair, you have to put chemicals in your hair, you have to hide your hair. You have to do all of these things in order to be accepted into white America, right? That are now coming into this newfound, all over again, old ass again, natural hair movement where they're going against what is supposed to be seen as the accepted in society to the point where now states are drafting and putting into law anti-hair discrimination bills. So you have black people, black women, particularly plagued by this when it comes down to the black hair community. You had these people that were sitting here talking about how Beyonce needs to do this with Blue's hair, needs to do that with Blue's hair, blah, 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 blah. Like, why can't this, why can't we appreciate this black little girl's hair? Why is it that because she's light-skinned, we expect her to have straight hair, but if we see a little dark-skinned girl and we see her kinky, coily hair, oh my gosh, look at this beautiful little black girl. Both little beautiful black girls. What difference does it make how her hair looks? That's how the grows out of her head. Like, I never understood that, right? Mind you, she's a child. Okay, this entire time you have adults across the world bullying a infant, bullying a toddler, bullying a freaking child, like literally bullying a preschooler her entire life, right? So we get to New Year's Eve where Beyonce threw her ha ha holiday party because we know Beyonce parties is off the chain, right? Megan the Stallion was invited. Cool. I love that. Megan is obsessed with her. You know, it's, it's a it's a kudo to kudo. You feel what I'm saying? So Megan posts this picture of her, Blue, and Beyonce. Cool. Gorgeous picture. And in the picture, Blue's hair is straightened. For the first time, we see this little girl's hair straight. Blue's hair is straightened. It's long. It's gorgeous. And for all of y'all that got something to say, that's how shrinkage works, boo-boo. You thought she had this little nappy-ass afro. Sis turned around with inches y'all are mad and i'm not pressed about it sis slay so now from what i understand it was well received it was it was welcomed and it was nice like it was it was like dope like look at this some of our favorites are together megan is a favorite beyonce is the queen and blue is the princess so i mean this is a great picture this is where it officially began because a journalist, what's his name? K. Austin Collins, who was a Vanity Fair film critic. So his comment on Twitter was, I have a feeling the Jay-Z face jeans are about to really hit Blue Ivy. And I feel so sorry for him. And I, and I don't know, I don't know why I never thought to look at him. But with him saying, you know, he worried about Blue Ivy her, inheriting her father face jeans. I know damn well Grover Jr. ain't got the audacity to talk about you worried about somebody child face she baby what you mean what is this on your you're worried about who face you like what what is this hairline doing like I, I have so like this 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 be it this be the moment where you gotta remind yourself that stooping to that level make you feel better but don't make the situation better so he said that then it's so let me look at her face hold on violet luca hold up can like somebody hold edna make violet your name is edna edna can i get a super suit edna can i get can i get a super suit because that's exactly what you look like this is wow wow in a response back to grover jr she said they haven't already. Sis, they haven't already? Question mark? Well, Farquad, keep adding. She said, or she'll just get plastic surgery at 16, a la Kylie Jenner, and we'll all have to pretend that she's always looked that way. I can't allow myself to feel too sorry for the incredibly rich. Who's pretending Kylie Jenner always looked that way? I'm not. I know that's not what the she look like i know she got work who is saying that we who pretending who 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 playing like kylie jenner didn't get work done who's pretending huh nobody else is pretending except for you you're pretending that that haircut looks good on you you're pretending that that lipstick doesn't make you look ash that's what you're pretending but nobody else is pretending that kylie jenner didn't get work done nobody so 
you you don't feel bad for cracking on a seven year old because her parents are wealthy. You don't feel bad for cyberbullying a child because her parents have money. Continuing in this article, they both, you know, caught hell because the beehive and black world just don't do it. A uh, Twitter user said that there's nothing harmless about insulting a child's features, regardless of whether that child has famous, famous parents or not. There's no value in colorism, anti-blackness, or attempting to pretend that class is a justification for targeting a seven-year-old with insults. Following, Grover Jr. said, he issued an apology, their tweets have been deleted, and he said, I'm sorry about the Blue Ivy tweet. Bad joke. And black girls in particular deserve better. You were the only one that thought it was funny. That's not a bad joke. You ain't funny. You said some shit that was foul. It wasn't meant to be funny. Vanity Fair apparently has issued an apology. They said Vanity Fair regrets that our critic Kay Austin Collins tweeted an inappropriate comment about Blue Ivy Carter and Jay-Z that violated the magazine standards and conflicted with our values. We agree with his decision to delete the tweet and we join him in apologizing for it. Luca ass, Violet, Edna head ass, she gonna say, I keep my composure. Sorry, I was cleaning my apartment while this blew up. Children of famous ought to be off limits, but time and again, they haven't been. Cause this is how I feel like she wrote it, sarcastic ass. I don't feel like she meant none of this shit. So I said something petty and have been called ugly, old, and a racist. I see no false claims. Continuing. I'm not playing the victim. Sorry that I insulted Beyonce's daughter by suggesting that she might get plastic surgery someday, like many children of famous people do. We've been moved to the evil category, and there's no way for us to get out of it. I'm sure there will be plenty of people responding to this, saying I'm playing the victim. The last quote of this article says, I truly believe Blue Ivy will go to the grave without knowing who I am. This is, this is Edna. Which is neither here nor there. But on the off chance she sees it, I'm sorry, young lady. You're gonna go far no matter what. Thank you, white lady, for your necessary stamp of approval that although you said some cruel, unnecessary things, that this little black girl, besides her looks, Besides her looking like her father, besides her parents being famous, she's gonna go far. Nobody wanna hear all that? You're out. Yo, I don't understand what is up. I, 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 I can't. My brain is like so, so, so. Two people that work for major publications, multi million dollar magazines can make these kind of re like statements that increase anti-blackness rhetoric. As a black man, for him to say what he said, opening that door for anybody else to go in on a black little girl, like you don't have nieces, have sisters, you don't have aunts. Once upon a time, every black woman you know used to be a little black girl. How dare you? All skin folk ain't kin folk, bruh. We all not fighting the same battle, nor are we fighting it at the same time. We all do not want black acceptance to be amongst black people. That's not how this works. A lot of black people that would prefer assimilation over being proud of who you are and where you come from. That any way, shape, or form you can whiten yourself, you should. You will praise and praise that this little girl now has straight hair, but still have the audacity to mock her proud African nature features. Are you serious? From what I understand, there was this other black, or whatever his Negroid ass name is, on Twitter talking about Ari Lennox and Tiana Taylor and comparing and saying that like, their beauty or some being looking like Rottweiler. He compared these two women to Rottweiler, like, bro, like, you did what? 
that like you was dead ass like were you dead ass that's my question were you serious or were you playing even if you was playing that's not cool but why would you why i am absolutely over in 2020 anti-black rhetoric from black people this cannot be tolerated stomached regurgitated and fed into the community any longer this has to stop and it has to stop when it comes down to black women it has to stop when it comes down to black children it has to stop whether people are racist or not they say anti-black rhetoric all the time it's in our vocabulary to be anti-black so you have to make the extra effort to make sure that you are cleaning up your speech and mentally and what you say out of your mouth and what you allow to be said to you i didn't think that coming into 2020 this would be one of the first videos that i made going off i feel better I do. And I feel like it's more black people that probably looked at this situation how I did over the shit and really being sick of black women, whether young or old, being the brunt of black men's jokes. You have no idea how dead that type of shit is in 2020. You have no idea. None whatsoever. Obviously. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please drop down in the comments and let me know what you think. Tell me about your new year. How was it? What'd you do? Did you celebrate? Do you have any resolutions you're working on? Or are you kind of just waiting to see what 2020 brings? And I don't want you to miss when we're just hanging out and we're just here. So don't forget to subscribe, bell, like, all that good stuff. Until next time, kids. This is.